We know that it's quite a lot for some of you, and you've got to travel quite a long distance to get to Nottingham. So if both you and the doctor looking at you currently are willing, we're, if, 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 they're both, if you and your doctors are happy, then Simon's willing to take over your normal lamb follow-up during that time. But I must stress that the doctors looking at you need to be happy as well, because we don't want to step on anybody's toes. And um, there'll be big visits right at the beginning, at one year and at two years, that you'll need to allow a full day for, really. And then shorter visits between times every three months that'll last about an hour. And there'll also be some blood tests that we'll need to do at two weeks, but they can be done at home and you can post the blood samples to us and we've got boxes for you to send the samples back to us. The big visits, so the visits at the beginning at uh, one year and 12 years involve... Um, um, a full examination, consultation, um, blood tests, urine tests, and full lung function. Uh, but just running through a basic visit, uh, when you arrive on your first day, you'll be met by uh, either myself or Simon and one of our research nurses. Uh, we'll make sure that all the paperwork's um, in place and that you've, you've been consented for the trial and that you're happy to continue, that you've not changed your mind. There'll be some questionnaires to fill in. You'll, there'll be um, an examination to do as well, and we'll just run through um, just to make sure there's no reason why you can't take part in the study. In terms of tests that you'll have on the day, um, you'll need to have a CT scan and a chest X-ray. The CT scan will be of your chest and of your kidneys to, make, to look at the size of your ch if you, you've got any kidney tumours as well, and to look at the extent of damage to your lungs that the, you've got with, with lung already. You'll have full lung function tests. So that'll be spiratory lung volumes, um, how well you, the gas is able to get in and out of your lungs as well. And also a walking test. Um, it's called the shuttle test. There'll be two points marked on the floor 10 metres apart and there'll be a little machine playing beeping at you. The beeps get close together and you have to basically walk backwards and forwards between the two marks until you get too breathless to do that. Uh, we're not trying to wear you out, but it's really to see how good your exercise tolerance is. And that'll be done again at 12 months and 24 months to see whether your ability to exercise stays the same, gets better or gets worse. Uh, and you'll also need to have some blood tests done and some urine tests done. And as part of the urine test, everyone gets a pregnancy test done to make sure that they're not pregnant and that it's safe to give them doxycycline. And for people that are willing, we'll also be taking sp sputum samples at the beginning, middle and end of the study. That's an, op that's an optional thing. We're asking people to prepare to have this test done to be done. It's not the nicest of things to have done, um, and what it involves is having a salty nebulizer, which causes you to cough. And some people can cough quite a lot with it and feel quite breathless. Other people are fine with it, but it will involve some coughing and some spluttering. And the reason we want to do that is, again, to look at these proteins in the spit to see whether they're, they're affected by giving you doxycycline. And, of course, there'll be some waiting around. Um, uh, we'll try and get you up in twos and threes so that there's someone else to talk to, but we would recommend you bring a book or something, to, a magazine or something to do during the day when you come and see us because there'll be quite a bit of waiting around. Um, the 12 and 24 month visits will be similar. There'll be a repeat CT scan at the end, but not one at 12 months, and there'll also be no more repeat chest x rays, so just one chest x ray at the start. The rest of the consultations will just involve spirometry, um, a chat, and a blood and urine test. And I'll also give you a monthly phone call between times to make sure that you're not having any problems with the drug, that um, there's nothing that you want to tell us about, there's no side effects that we're not expecting either. So in terms of common questions, um, I've been asked a couple already. I know that some of you have got to travel quite far to get to us, and one of the questions that we were given was, isn't parking at Queen's Medical Centre dreadful? How am I going to find parking? Uh, we appreciate that's a, that's, a, that's a big issue. So what we're going to try and sort out is somewhere for you to park um, so that you don't have to spend an hour driving around the Queen's site um, uh, to, to find a parking space. What that might involve is parking at the university and one of us meeting you and taking you across the hospital. But as I said, there will be a research nurse team with us as well. So if you think walking around is going to be a problem, then we can arrange for somebody to wheel you around the hospital in a wheelchair and give you a scenic view of the Queen's Medical Centre as well. Um, um, first question is, why do I have to be seen in Nottingham? Why can't I have these tests done in my local centre? Um, quite a lot of these, the reason that you need to be seen in Nottingham is from an admin point of view. Because um, of funding resources, we're a single centre study, so all the doctors are centred in one spot. Also, um, for a decent study, you need to have tests that you can compare from visit to visit and also between patients. And the most effective way of doing that is if all the tests are done in the same department by the same people. We know from seeing people in clinic that if tests are done in the different departments, 
then they can get slightly different results from us. And it's difficult to make a comparison if we've got tests that have been done in different centres. So for us to get meaningful results and meaningful trends, all the tests really need to be done in Nottingham. But we can make a contribution to your travel costs, particularly if you're travelling a long way. And for some people who are coming long distances, we can arrange for you to stay at the patient hotel here uh, and, and, and come overnight the, the night before or stay the night to test and then go home afterwards. What if I change my mind? Well, you are a volunteer for this study. There is no compulsion for you to stay in the study if you no longer feel that's the right thing for you to do or you feel that it's not worth your time or effort. You can change your mind at any time. And also your medical care won't be affected. We appreciate that you put yourself out to take part in the study. We're just grateful for it. So if you change your mind, that's absolutely fine. What if you get worse during the study? Well, the first thing to say is, we're going to be monitoring you very, very closely to make sure that doesn't happen or that if it does, that we pick it up at an early stage. So in addition to your three monthly visits, you'll get a phone call from myself or Simon on a monthly basis to make sure things are fine. And we also have an emergency telephone, mobile phone number for you to contact us between times should you want to talk. If things are getting worse and you think you're on the placebo, then there are facilities in place for us to find out what you're taking. So if it turns out you're on the placebo, you've got the option of um, going onto the doxycycline, so going on active treatment. Or if you're not happy with that, you can leave the study altogether. And again, if you're on doxycycline and you're getting worse, again, you've got the option of leaving the study if you're not happy with that. So withdrawal is possible at any time. Is doxycycline safe? The answer is yes. As with any medication, there are side effects, but doxycycline has been around for a long time and has been used for... Um, over a year in, in a variety of studies, particularly by the dentists and by the vascular surgeons. It does have side effects, so as with any drug, and the main side effects that people um, reported when being on doxycycline is some people get a bit of indigestion, stomach upset type symptoms, as you do with any antibiotic. And also, some people have reported that they get a rash with doxycycline that looks a little bit like sunburn. We know that if that happens to you on doxycycline, it goes away again if you stop the doxycycline and people in other studies where they've got this rash have been able to back on the doxycycline either at the same dose or at a reduced dose. And we also know that if you get this rash, uh, that if, you, if, you, if, you, if you've been at risk of getting this rash, that if you use sun protection, so sun creams and things like that, it reduces your risk of you getting this rash. Also, I'm sure there's going to be scope for us to make sure this doesn't happen. So if you're a sun worshipper, you're going on a skiing holiday where it's going to be very sunny, you want to spend a week on a beach, I'm sure we can make provision to either reduce or stop the doxycycline during that period so that you can be part of the study and that we reduce the risk of you getting this rash as well. So the big thing to say is it's, it's an active antibiotic that's been around for a long time, so we know what its safety profile is like. A lot of people have been on it, and other studies have used it for the types of time that we're talking about using it for, and you'll be closely monitored during the study as well. So what next? Well, again, many thanks to um, people that have replied so far. I think just, a, just over a third of people have sent me slips already saying that they can or they can't take part in the study or they've got more questions, and that's really impressive. Uh, we, we know that you're a very, very motivated group, but I was surprised at how many of you got back to me so quickly. Um, for those of you that have either spoken to me today or have sent me slips, I'll be making contact on Monday and starting to, org starting to organise tests from then. If you want to arrange things today, uh, if you want to go through consent forms or fill in some provisional bits of paperwork, then I'll be around at the coffee session and afterwards um, just to make sure that you're eligible and we can fill in some paperwork today. Failing that, I can phone you or arrange a meeting in the next week or so. Um, if you have any questions, I can either take them now or at the end. And if you're interested in sponsoring me for um, uh, the Nottingham Half Marathon, then I'm using the Just Giving website as well, and that's my, my web address. Thank you very much for listening to me.